فابتداء حياكم الله أجمعين وأسأل الله عز وجل أن يكتب لنا الأجر جميعا في هذا اللقاء The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى He started off after praising Allah sending greetings to everyone and making dua that Allah Azza wa Jal He bless us in the likes of this gathering uh, and, and make it something good at the moment we meet him وقد أخبر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن فضيلة الاجتماع لتدبر كتاب الله سبحانه وتعالى إذ يقول And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he talked about the virtue of coming together to ponder the book of Allah when he said مجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله that no group of people gather in a home from the homes of Allah يتلون كتاب الله reciting the book of Allah ويتدارسونه بينهم studying it amongst themselves إلا نزلت عليهم الرحمة except that the mercy descends upon them و حفتهم الملائكة and that the angels encompass them and surround them وذكرهم الله في من عنده and Allah Azawajal mentions them amongst those whom he's who are with him وفي بعض الروايات لا يذكر لم يذكر فيها المسجد and in some of the versions or the narrations of this hadith the masjid specifically wasn't mentioned فالفضيلة عامة وفي المسجد زيادة أجر الله أعلم so this virtue is something that is general and when it comes to the masjid then it's an addition in its reward and Allah knows best وتدارس كتاب الله عز وجل هو تدبر القرآن وتفسير القرآن وحديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم داخل في ذلك. And studying the book of Allah عز وجل it includes the tafsir of the Quran and the pondering over the Quran and likewise the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وأسأل الله عز وجل أن يكتب لنا جميعا الأجر في هذا المجلس وفي هذا الحضور سواء حضورا في المسجد أو استماعا عن بعد. And the Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he says he asked Allah عز وجل to write for us the أجر of this coming together regardless if it's the أجر of those who are here in person or the reward for those who are listening uh, uh, abroad or via uh, uh, abroad. والموضوع الذي اخترناه لأن يكون في هذا اللقاء كما تعلمون موضوع مهم يتعلق في الثبات على الدين. And the topic that we've chosen to speak about in this gathering, as you all know, is a very important topic that deals with how to be steadfast upon the religion. And being steadfast upon the religion of Allah, its virtue is great. And there's no doubt that this dunya, this worldly life, is a fitna or a trial. ولهذا كان من دعاء الأنبياء والصالحين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا. And for this reason you find that the du'a or from the du'a of the prophets and likewise the righteous individuals was that they would say, Rabbana, O oh our Lord, don't cause our hearts to deviate uh, after you have given us guidance. And we read in every 
ونستمع إلى كلام الإمام وهو يقرأ في صلاته اهدنا الصراط المستقيم وهذا دعاء بالثبات على هذا الصراط نعم إن الشيخ حبيبه الله تعالى هي سيد إن وي رسائت in every salat that we make, in every raka'ah, whether it's one that is done aloudly or one that is done with a quieted voice, or if we're listening to the imam recite, we say in every raka'ah, sirat al mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. And this is a dua. وَكَانَ مِنْ دُعَاءِ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِي عَلَى دِينِكِ and from the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that he would say, "O one who alternates or alters the hearts, make my heart affirm upon your religion." وهذا كله يؤكد أهمية النظر ومعرفة الوسائل المعينة على الثبات. And all of this are from the things that emphasize and show the importance of paying attention to the things that assist in being steadfast. نحن بدأنا هنا في بعض الأدعية من القرآن وما دعا به النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهذا أول أمر وأهم أمر بأن يدعو الإنسان ربه خالصا من قلبه يدعو الله بأن يثبته على هذا الدين. The Sheikh Hafizullah Taala he said, and so you see, we started here with certain ayat that had du'a in them, and likewise certain adi'ah or du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is the first means that is that an individual ask Allah that he makes supplication or du'a to Allah that he give him steadfastness upon the deen. و. من المعين على الثبات على هذا الدين قراءة القرآن بتدبر and from the things that assist a person in being steadfast upon the religion is the reading of the Quran with تدبر or with good pondering and reflection يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها. Allah subhanahu wa taala he says in his book the translation of which do they not ponder the Quran or is it on their hearts their the locks of their hearts. ولهذا الأجر العظيم جعله الله عز وجل لمن يقرأ هذا القرآن بإمعان وتدبر. And for this reason, we find the great reward that Allah Azza wa Jal has made it for the one who reads the Quran with focus and reflection. فالقرآن يقرأ تلاوة وتدبرا وعملا به ودعوة إليه. So the reading of the Quran is done in a way that includes reflection or pondering, a tadabbur. والقراءة and then likewise the the reading of the Quran is that which is done with tilaw which reading it likewise with reflection and then likewise additionally reading it to act by it and then reading with دعوتون إليه calling to it ولهذا يقص الله عز وجل في القرآن على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبار الأنبياء والمرسلين. And for this reason we see that Allah Azza wa Jal he mentions the story in the Quran to his prophet about the other prophets and messengers uh, that have went before. يقول الله سبحانه وكل نقص عليك من أنباء الرسل ما نثبت به فؤادك. وكلا نقص عليك من أنباء الرسل ما نثبت به فؤادك. Allah Azza wa Jal He says in the Quran in all of them we mention the stories of them to you that which will you thabit bihi fuadik that which will make firm your mind and your intellect or your heart your fuad your heart. ف 
فإذا الله بشأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بأن أخبار الرسل والأنبياء تزيد في إيمانه وثباته فكيف بغيره صلى الله عليه وسلم So if this is Allah Azawajal showing the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that the stories of the Anbiya and the Rusul, the Prophets and the Messengers of the past that information about them will be something that will increase and fortify his Iman then how about other than him صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا مما يؤكد لنا أهمية تدبر القرآن وأنه معين على الثبات والاستقامة. So this is something that emphasizes for us the importance of pondering and reflecting on on the Quran and that it is a means for this istiqam or this steadfastness. وكذلك لزوم الصلوات والمحافظة على أوقاتها. Likewise, from the from the means is diligently sticking to the salat and performing it in its appropriate times. ولأن الله يقول إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر. As Allah Azza wa Jalla He says, the translation of which is indeed indeed the salat it forbids from al fahsha wal munkar from indecency and all despicable actions. فالذي يؤدي الصلاة خالصا لله. So the individual who performs salat sincerely for Allah alone. مستحضرا أنه يصلي أمام الله والله رقيب عليه. Keeping in mind that he is praying in front of Allah and Allah is well aware and watchful over what he does. ومستحضرا ما يقرأ في صلاته من القرآن والتسبيح والحمد والتشهد والصلاة على النبي صلى الله and عليه وسلم. And he's keeping in mind that which he is saying during his salat from the Quran and from the tashahud and from the praising of Allah and tasbih and things of this nature. ويصلي صلاة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام كما أمرنا صلوا كما رأيتموني أصلي. And he prays the way that he prays is in accordance with the prayer of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the one who said pray the way you see me pray. من كان على هذه الصفة بإذن الله صلاته تنهاه عن الفعشاء والمنكر وتكون وسيلة للثبات على الدين. So whoever his salat was in this method, then inshallah, this is the salat that will prevent him from indecency and despicable actions. And this is the salat that will be an assistance for his steadfastness upon the religion. وكذلك المحافظة على صلاتها جماعة وبخاصة للرجال إذ هم المأمورون بذلك. And likewise from this is to be diligent in observing it in congregation. And this is something that is emphasized upon the men because they are the ones who are addressed with that. فصلاته جماعة ولقاؤه مع إخوانه في المسجد وينظر من يسابقه إلى الخيرات هذا فيه دفع إلى الأمام وإلى الاستقامة أكثر. Naam, the Shaykh Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said, so his praying in jama'ah and his being around his brothers and him seeing those who compete with him in goodness and try to outpace him in righteousness, this will be something that will push him forward and be from the means of his steadfastness upon the religion. Wa la shakka anna min al-mu'een ala al-istiqamah تعلم العلم الشرعي الصحيح. And there's no doubt that from the means that make one steadfast upon the religion is to learn the legislated knowledge that is accurate. لأنه يعبد الله على بصيرة دون تقصير في العبادة ودون غلو فيها. 
because if an individual does this, then he is able to worship Allah upon clear sightedness without any deficiencies and without going past the mark in his worship. يستقيم على ماذا؟ على الدين إذا لا بد له من علم ما هو الدين؟ ما الذي أمرنا الله به حتى أفعل؟ وما الذي نهى الله عنه حتى أترك؟ And this is because when we say استقامة then what is it استقامة or this being steadfasted steadfast upon the religion so it's necessary that we know what the religion is it's necessary so that we know what the religion is and what Allah commanded so we can do it and we know what Allah forbade us from, so we can avoid it. And that's necessitates Allah knowledge. Allah, he mentioned in his book the virtue of knowledge. And likewise, the virtue of the scholars. And likewise in the Sunnah. كل ذلك لأجل العمل بهذا العلم. All of that for the sake of one acting in accordance to this knowledge. فالعلم الشرعي معين على الثبات على الدين. And so therefore this legislated knowledge or this knowledge of the Sharia ah is something that assists an individual in being steadfast upon the religion. وهذا يجعلنا أن نقرأ ونتعلم من أهل العلم ومن كتب أهل العلم المعروفين. And this is something that makes us uh, learn from and read the books of the people of knowledge who are well known. المشهود لهم. Those who it's been attested for them. الله عز وجل يقول فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون الله عز وجل he says ask the people of a dhikr if you don't know فالسؤال لأهل القرآن لأهل السنة لأهل الحديث لعلماء المعروفون المشهود لهم so the questions are posed to the people of the Quran the people of the sunnah the people of hadith those ulama who it is attested for them their virtue and their status and knowledge. وَلَيْسَ الْمَرْجَعِ هُوَ أَنْ تَفْتَحَ جوجل أَوْ يَاهُ أَوْ غَيْرِهَا وَتَبْحَثْ عَنْ دِينِكْ مِنْ هُنَا وَهُنَاكْ وَأَنْتَ لَا تَعْلَمْ مَنْ الَّذِي يُجِيبُكَ And it is not the correct path that an individual, they open up Google or they open up Yahoo and they take their religion from here or there in spite of the fact that you might not know who is the one who is answering your question. لكن إذا عرفنا عالما أو كتبا معتمدة ووثقنا بذلك نعم نستفيد من هذا. But if we know of a scholar or of books that are verified and surety is had with them then yes we can benefit from them. ومراجعة العلماء مباشرا إن كان موجودا ويي وسهل التواصل معهم أو زيارتهم أو الدراسة عليهم هذا هو الأصل المطلوب. And being directly connected to the scholars, if that is something that is easy and facilitated by being around them and taking from them directly, then this is the foundation and this is what is uh, requested or this is what should be sought out. ولو تعذر ذلك يكون بكثرة الاستماع إليهم في دروسهم وللتفسير والحديث والعقيدة وغير ذلك. And if this is something that is extremely difficult, then being connected to them would be from an abundance of listening to their lectures, that which deals with tafsir and hadith and aqidah, etc. و تدبر سيرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كذلك من المعين على الاستقامة. Likewise, reflecting over the biography or the سيرة 
of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then this is from the means of being steadfast upon the religion. ومن الأمور التي تعين على الاستقامة كذلك عيادة المرضى. Likewise, the Sheikh Hafizahullah Taala he said from the things that assist in being steadfast upon the religion is visiting the sick individual, visiting the sick. جاء في بعض الحديث عود المرضى فإنها تذكركم الآخرة. It's come in some of the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, visit the sick. Because indeed, it reminds you of the akhirah. It reminds you of the hereafter. فالمريض وفي بعض الحالات من المرض قد يتذكر الإنسان الموت وأنه قد يمرض هذا المرض أو قريبا من ذلك وبالتالي لا يستطيع أن يعبد الله على الوجه الصحيح فيجعل الإنسان يجتهد في صحته and so the sick individual and likewise certain types of sickness, when an individual sees this, it will remind him of that which is to come and there will be a, a moment or a time when he is unable to worship Allah Azza in a correct manner. And so this is something that encourages him and pushes him to work more and worship more in his current situation. وزيارة القبور كذلك قد أرشد إليها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال زور القبور فإنها تذكركم الآخرة. And likewise visiting the graves, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he directed us to this and he said visit the grave because indeed that is something that will remind you of the hereafter. فالإنسان لما يشهد الجنائز ويصلي على المسلم صلاة الجنازة ويذهب إلى القبر أو يعود القبور سيتذكر أنني سأموت الآن أو بعد فترة. نعم. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he says so an individual when he witnesses the janaza prayer and he follows the janaza or he visits the grave then it's necessary that this is going to be something that is going to remind him of the hereafter and he's going to know that I'm going to die next or in a moment or at some appointed time and this is something that will push him forward. فهذا يجعله يتدبر في نفسه ويتفكر وبالتالي يقبل على الآخرة ويبتعد عن المعاصي لله. And so this is something that will cause him to reflect and to ponder and it will be something that will cause him to advance in the obedience and the worship of Allah and to take a step back from his disobedience. وكذلك الحرص على الرفقة الصالحة الرفقة الطيبة Likewise from the means is having good companionship righteous companions and good companions والله عز وجل يقول واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, the meaning of which could be translated as, and make yourself patient with wasbir nafsaka ma'alladheena who call upon their Lord in the early morning and in the early evening, seeking out his face. And do not let your eyes go past them, uh, uh, seeking out the, uh, the decorations of the hayat dunya or this worldly life. وأعظم صحبة هذه الصحبة كما تجلسون الآن في هذا المسجد وكما تستمعون إلى الدروس من تفسير ومن حديث ومن عقيدة ومن نصائح هذه مجالس تزيد في إيمان الإنسان بالله سبحانه وتعالى. And from the most noble or the highest or the greatest types of this type of companionship is this type of companionship that you all are in now when you are in the masjid and you're listening to the lessons and you're participating in the classes of tafsir or hadith or aqidah or the good advice that can be given. All of these are from the good companionship that assists in the religion. وَاسْتِحْضَارُ الْإِنْسَانِ 
ربه بأن الله عز وجل مطلع عليه عالم بما يفعل وبما ينوي في صدره هذا يجعل الإنسان يخشى ربه ويبتعد عن الحرام Likewise, an individual keeping in his mind and being conscious of the fact that his Lord is one who is aware of him and sees all that he does. This is something that will make a person stay away from the disobedience of his Lord and be of those who have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وحرص الإنسان على النوافل والمستحبات إضافة إلى الفرائض يجعله أكثر ثباتا. And likewise, a person having diligence in performing the voluntary actions in addition to the obligatory ones, then this is something that will give an individual an increased amount of steadfastness. فيحافظ على السنن في الصلوات ولا سيما صلاة الفجر. سنة الفجر والوتر وقيام الليل. So an individual he pays close attention to performing the sunan or the voluntary prayers after the prayers or before them. Specifically from that he mentions Salat al-Fajr, the sunnah of Salat al-Fajr, and likewise al-Witr, and likewise standing in the night, the night prayer. وكذلك الصيام المستحب. في الأيام الشهيرة من عاشوراء ومن ست من شوال والاثنين والخميس ونحو ذلك وأقل شيء في الشهر يصوم ثلاثة أيام سواء الأيام البيض أو كانت مفرقة He said حفظه الله تعالى and likewise the voluntary fasting that voluntary fasting is something that does this as well so an individual he seeks out to fast those days of voluntary fasting like عاشوراء or the six of Shawwal, or other than that from the days. And it, the least that he does is to fast three days, whether they be the Ayyam al Bib or those three days in the middle of the month, the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the Hijri calendar, or if they separate between them and sep- fast them three days at separate times of a month. الحرص على البر بالوالدين على وجه الخصوص له أثر عظيم على الاستقامة. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said and likewise is having righteousness, especially to one's parents, or being good to one's parents. Albir specifically to one's parents. Then this is from the means that gives an individual steadfastness upon the religion. ونحن نعلم أن الله عز وجل قرن مع عبادته. الإحسان إلى الوالدين والبر بالوالدين. And we all know that Allah uh, عز وجل He made an attachment or He mentioned in conjunction with His worship alone righteousness towards one's parents. فالإنسان ببره بوالديه حتى لو كان كافرين واجب شرعا. And so a person showing righteousness to his parents even if they were two disbelievers or kufar then this is something that is wajib or obligatory in the legislation of the religion of islam so obeying them is something that is obligatory as long as that obedience is not in the disobedience of allah أن يزداد برا وإحسانا وصلة بوالديهم بعد إسلامهم أكثر مما كانوا ليعلم هؤلاء ميزة الإسلام العظيم. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said and I call upon all of my brothers and my sisters whom Allah Azza wa Jal has honored them to accept Islam. That they have more righteousness and more goodness shown to their parents after their Islam than they did before, so that they could know that this is from the results of Islam and that it calls to righteousness 
towards one's parents. أذكر لكم باختصار لا أريد أن أذكر رواية كاملة للوقت أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه كانت أمه كافرة. The Sheikh Hafizahullah Taala he said I want to mention to you all and I'll mention it in an abbreviated form. I don't want to mention the entirety of the narration for the sake of time, but the the story is that Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, his mother was a kafira. His mother was a disbeliever. كانت كان يسكن معها وكانت تسب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وتشتمه. He used to live with her and she used to curse the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and speak bad about him regarding him. ذهب إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So he went to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وقال له إن أمي تقول فيك كذا وكذا وكذا. لم يذكر ماذا قالت. لكن قال ذهب ويبكي. أمي تقول فيك كذا وكذا وكذا. And so he went to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, My mother says so and so and such and such about you. And he didn't mention what his mother said. Instead, he went to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He was crying. And he said, my mother, she says so and so and such and such about you. So make dua to Allah that he will guide my mother. And so the Prophet وسلم, he said, oh Allah, guide the mother of Abu Hurairah. رجع أبو هريرة إلى بيته. So Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه he went back to his home. اقترب من الباب قالت له أمه اصبر. And so when he got close to the door, his mother said to him, be patient, wait. سمع صوت ماء. سمع صوت ماء. ماء ماء ووتر ماء من الغسل يعني كانت تغتسل. أحسن الله عليكم. The Sheikh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he said, so Abu Huraira, he heard the sound of water. And then he said, it's as, as if she was taking a ghusl. And so when he entered upon her, she said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. فاستجاب الله دعاء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فآمنت وأسلمت. And so Allah Azza wa Jal He answered the dua of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and so she embraced the faith and accepted Islam. رجع إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يبكي فرحا. So he returned to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he was crying out of joy. الله أكبر انظروا المرأة أمه تسب النبي وتشتمه ما قال له النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أترك أمك ابتعد عنها تركه في بره وإحسانه إليها وأرشده إلى الصبر والتحمل ودعا لها بالهداية he said, Allahu Akbar, consider this, that the Prophet وسلم, this woman was cursing him and attacking him verbally. And the Prophet وسلم, he didn't say to Abu Huraira, leave her, abandon her. Instead, he advised him and directed him to continue in his bir, in his ihsan, his righteousness and his goodness towards her and to continue to act with her. And he made dua for her. Well, صلة الرحم عموم العقارب من الأمور العظيمة التي تعين الإنسان على الثبات والاستقامة. Likewise, the Sheikh Hafizullah Taala he said, generally speaking, connecting the family ties is something that is from the means that increases an individual upon steadfastness in the religion. والابتعاد عن المحرمات من الزنا أو النظر المحرم ولعب القمار والمحرمة كلها معينة على الثبات والاستقامة. 
the Sheikh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he said, and likewise, staying away from acts of disobedience like zina or looking at something impermissible, in, impermissible or impermissible gambling and things of this nature, abandoning these things that are haram is from the things that give a person steadfastness upon the religion. والابتعاد عن مواطن الفتن. Likewise, the Sheikh Habib Allah Taala he said, staying away from the places where fitna occurs. هذا أمر مهم ومن المعين على الثبات. So this is a very important matter, and this is from the means that increase a person in steadfastness. فالإنسان لا يأتي بالنار ويشعلها بجانب البترول ويقول إياك إياك أن تحترق بل عليه أن يعمل بالأسباب ويباعد بين النار وبين ما يشعلها ويزيدها اشتعالا So an individual he doesn't light a fire and increase it with accelerants of petrol and things like this and then say whoa don't get burnt instead it's necessary that he makes between himself and that fire and the things that accelerate it and cause it to grow a distance and a separation. لهذا قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام إن الحلال بين والحرام بين وبينهما أمور مشتبهات. الإنسان يبتعد من المواطن التي فيها شبهة بين الحلال والحرام. And for this reason, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that in that hadith, in the halal abayyin, indeed that which is halal is clear, and that which is haram is clear, and between the two of them are matters that are unclear. And so, an individual he needs to make a separation or a place that is a boundary between him and that which is haram. ويقول في نهاية الحديث من اتقى الشبهات فقد استبر آلدينه وعرضه. And he says at the end of that hadith, whoever protects himself from the shubuhat, then he has found safety and uh, freedom of any criticism for himself and his honor and his religion. هذا فيما يخص الشبهات التي بين الحلال والحرام. فكيف and this is the situation regarding those shubuhat that are the place between the halal and the haram. فكيف الحال والشأن في الأمور التي يعرف أنها محرمة أماكن كلها حرام مواقع فيها فساد مجموعات كلها شر كيف يدخل إنسان على ذلك؟ so how about those places that are known to be full of the haram, those things that are completely haram, like the places that everything in them is haram, or those mawaqir, those websites that are full of corruption, or those groups that everything in them is bad? فالإنسان لا يعرض نفسه للفتن ويلقي بنفسه في مواطن الفتن وثم يسأل عن نفسه لماذا أنا كذا ولماذا عليه أن يبتعد ويجاهد نفسه في الابتعاد عما يفسد قلبه ودينه نعم so the Sheikh Habibullah Ta'ala he said so an individual he doesn't throw himself or place himself in the positions of trial and fitna and in the places that cause fitna and then ask after that why am I in such a circumstance instead it's necessary that he take that precaution beforehand and make himself removed from the places of fitna and tribulation. وَعَلَيْهِ إِنْ وَقَعَ فِي مَعْصِيَةٍ أَوْ زَلَّ أَنْ يَتُوبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيُكْثِرِ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ وَالتَّوْبَةِ إِلَى رَبِّهِ مِنْ هَذَا الذَّنْبِ And upon him is that if he falls into a mistake or into the disobedience of Allah, Upon, his, upon him is that he make tawbah and that he ask Allah to forgive him for that mistake that he has made and that he uh, uh, resolved to not return to it. وَإِنْ رَأَى نَفْسَهُ أَنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ 
قد تحكم فيه في هذه المعصية واستمر عليها يلجأ إلى بعض إخوانه يسألهم إما مباشرة أو يقول أحد الناس مبتلى بكذا وكذا ما نصيحتك ما الحل ما المخرج من هذا And if he finds from himself that the shaitan has taken advantage of him in this situation, in this action, and so he continues upon it, and it's something that's hard for him to abandon, then in that circumstance, he seeks the assistance of his brothers, either by directly mentioning his circumstances or by mentioning it in an indirect way, saying there's a brother who has been afflicted with this. What is your advice? What is your suggestion to help keep him out of this type of circumstance because this is a sickness it's an actual sickness or a disease that requires treatment like any other and so he shouldn't leave himself to increase in sickness نتأمل أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان من دعائه يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك. And we reflect on the 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 statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and from the du'a that he used to make was O one who alternates or allows the hearts to fluctuate allow my heart to remain fast or steadfast upon your religion. فأكثر من الدعاء بالثبات ولا يغفل الانسان عن هذا so be abundant in your dua or your supplicating to Allah for firmness in the religion and don't be uh, uh, don't give up or be low in doing that ويكثر من دعاء الله عز وجل في سجوده وفي قيام الليل وفي اوقات استجابه الدعاء And he should be abundant in making the supplication to Allah generally in his sujood and at the night prayer and uh, uh, at the times when dua is especially answered. Because indeed the major affliction is the affliction that one suffers in his religion. نعم المصائب كثيرة قد يصاب الإنسان بموت عزيز أو قريب أو فقد مال أو مرض أو غير ذلك. Because yes, the afflictions are abundant. An individual might be afflicted with the loss of someone he deemed great or held in high esteem or relative, or he might be afflicted with the loss of wealth or a sickness or other than that. لكن المصيبة الكبرى والعظمى هي مصيبة الدين. But in reality, the great and major affliction is the affliction one suffers in his religion. He said in the, 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 the most prominent or the head at the head of those afflictions is a shirk and disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لأن الشرك محبط للعمل. Because a shirk is something that wipes away or causes all of your actions to fall off. فكلما وحد الإنسان ربه واجتنب الشرك صغيره وكبيره. So to the extent that an individual makes Allah one in the in the worship that he directs towards him and he avoids shirk that which is major from it and that which is minor to that extent he will be closer to being steadfast upon the religion كما أرشد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So give great diligence and focus unto worshiping Allah the way the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم directed us. والله عز وجل يقول إن تجتنبوا كبائر ما تنهون. And Allah عز وجل he says 
if you avoid the major of that of which you've been forbidden from, إن تجتنبوا كبائر ما تنهون عنه نكفر عنكم سيئاتكم. If you avoid the major of that which you've been prohibited from, we will expiate for you. نكفر عنكم your sins. نكفر عنكم سيئات. We will expiate for you the the sins that you might fall into your evil deeds. وندخلكم مدخلا كريما. And we will enter you. An entering of nobility or an entering that is one of nobility and honor. And so avoiding the sins generally and specifically the major sins, then this is a great means of having Istiqam or steadfastness in the religion, and likewise getting your sins removed from you. وأسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى بأسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العلى أن يثبتني وإياكم. آمين. The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said that he asked Allah by his asma al husna and likewise his sifatih al ula. His great qualities that he give us steadfastness upon the religion. And that he keep us protected and free from the fitan, all of it. Fitan al-shubuhat al-lati taqdah fi imanina wa fi al-aqeedah wa fi al-tawheed wa fi al-Qur'an wa fi al-hadith wa al-ghayra dhalika min thawabit al-deen a fitna or a tribulation that attacks us in our religion or in the Quran or in our Aqidah or in other than that from the things that he mentioned from the religion. وكذلك فتن الشهوات التي يحبها الإنسان ويهويها ما يتعلق بالحب من الجنسين كل منهما تجاه الآخر أو حب المال بغير حق وبغير ما شرع الله عز وجل. No, I mistranslated the first time. He said he asked Allah to keep us safe from the fitna of shubuhat. The first time, the fitna of doubtful matters that attack in our religion, whether it be in the Quran or our Aqid or other than that. And then here, the Sheikh Hafidhu Allah Taala he said, and likewise from the fitna of shahwat, the fitna of desires that uh, can lead a person to doing things that are unlawful, like individuals loving the same sex or loving the same gender, or having an extreme love of wealth, or other than that. The Sheikh Hafizullah Ta'ala out of his generosity said and to according to that agreement that we have with the brother who set it up Abu Mu'awiyah and to uh, we'll stop at this amount and he, he sent you know his appreciation for all of you all and he said if there are any questions we'll open the floor now for any questions that might be had by anybody. It's about the ayah? Which one? So Palak? Which I? Uh huh. No. أحسن الله عليكم يا شيخنا يقول السائل هو خارج عن موضوع الدرس إذا تسمح أن قول الله تعالى الله الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن هل السماوات السبع هي الجنات أو غير الجنات من السماوات يعني عموما؟ ما فهمت السؤال الجنة غير السماوات لكن ماذا يقصد هو بالضبط؟ Yeah, the Sheikh Hafiz Allah Taala said I don't understand the question. It might be because of my translation. He said the skies are other than the jannat. So the skies and the jannat are two different things. What's your question specifically? يقول يكرر يقول هل يعني هذا بالنسبة للترجمة يا شيخنا يترجمونها باللغة الإنجليزية على ما يفهمونه بعض الناس أن السماوات 
يعني جنات فهل الجنات هي السماوات كما يعني نعرف أنها يعني ما على فوقنا أو هي الجنات سبعة لا 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 يفسر السماوات هي السماوات لا يفسر السماوات بمعنى الجنات يعني عندكم في الترجمة هكذا بعضهم يترجم السماوات لا. الحقيقة أن اللغة القديمة يعني الكلمة عندنا heaven أول ما يتبادر إلى ذهن بعض الناس أن heaven معناه جنة ولكن في اللغة القديمة heaven معناه السماء فلما يقرأ واحد في اللغة الحديث ويرى كلمة heaven يظن أن معناه جنات وإلا في اللغة القديم القديم الأمريكي الإنجليزية كان معنى كلمة heaven السماء يعني تترجم تترجم هكذا يعني أي نعم يترجم بكلمة heaven The Sheikh Hafizullah before that he said that no the skies should not be explained as as if they are the Jannat the Jannat are other than the skies and then he asked is that how it's translated with you all because I said to him before that that the issue is with the translation that sometimes they translate the word sky in English according to the old language of English which is the word heaven and heaven linguistically doesn't mean Jannah it means sky But that's the old way of speaking in English. And nowadays when people read it, sometimes they see the word heaven and the first thing that comes to their mind is Jannah. But it really means sky in the old language. هناك بعض الأقوال لبعض المفسرين يعني بأن الجنة في السماء الرابعة أو غير ذلك. لكن السماوات عموما ليست الجنة طبعا. يحتاج إلى تأمل أكثر ومراجعة. أحسن الله عليكم. The Sheikh Habibullah Ta'ala, he said, there are some uh, narrations that mention that the, the Jannah is in the fourth sky or other than that. But generally speaking, the Jannah is not the skies. And obviously this affair requires more review and returning back to uh, it. Tafadli, Sheikh. No. Sometimes they are not good. understand. like يقول السائل ذكرنا احسن الله عليكم الامر بالنسبه للجوجل وياهو ان لا نتخذها مرجعا لديننا ولكن إذا تعد إذا تعذر الحضور عند المشايق ووثقنا في بالموقع فهل يجوز لنا أن يعني نتابع الدروس مثلا في الإنترنت أو في اليوتيوب مثلا خصوصا إذا لم يتيسر لنا الحضور عند المشايق؟ أنا قصدت أنا أريد أبحث عن مسألة شرعية الآن مثلا يعني هذا الذي سأل الآن مثلا عن الجنة هل السماوات المقصود بها الجنة؟ سبيل المثال لا أجد أنا أبحث في جوجل ويأتيني الجواب من أناس لا أعرفهم من مواقع لا أدري ما هي وهذه أخذها مسلمة هذا غلط أسأل أهل العلم إذا أنا رأيت كلاما لأهل العلم ابن باز الألماني ابن حجر النووي أمثال هؤلاء ومن كتبهم وموثوق بذلك ويحيلني إلى كتابه فعلا إلى كلام مواقع معروفة مشهورة يعني موقع وزارة الشؤون الإسلامية نفرض موقع برنامج البرامج المسلمة أنها مشهود لها هذا لا إشكال في ذلك صوتيات شروح للعلماء أستفيد نعم أنا قلت هذا في كلامي ألا يعني لأجل ضيق الوقت ما كان واضحا عليكم ممكن تعيد اسم الموقع الذي ذكرته بالنص في موقع وزارة الشؤون الإسلامية وزارة الشؤون الإسلامية نعم Uh, so the Sheikh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he said, uh, let's take, for example, what we mentioned. I, I, I specifically mentioned this, like, let's take, for example, the question that the brother asked about the skies. Are they the Jannat, for example, that a person just goes online and Googles it or searches it up and takes any answer that comes. And this is a ghalab. This is the mistake, right, that he just takes an answer from anyone that it comes from. But as far as if an individual goes back to those verifiable sources, They go back to those sites that are affirmed and reliable and like the, that of, they go back to like Bin Baz or they direct us to Bin Baz or Sheikh Al-Albani, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala. 
and Fitlan, it, it, it directs us back to their books, then this is something that's good. This is something that we, we specifically mentioned in the lesson itself. And maybe because of the tightness of time, it wasn't all that clear. But this is something that's when it's going back to these proper sources. He mentioned sources, websites that are known and reliable, like Wizara Tashu'un al Islam, and likewise other places that are safe and free of any uh, 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 harm or things of that nature. Fatawa Lejna Da Ima Matalan Hayat Kivar Ulama. Like the site of the Fatawa to Lejna Tidda Ima, the, the site of the permanent committee of Fatwa. Uh, uh, or the Hayatul Kibar al Ulama, the, the major council of scholars and things like this. Mm. These type of sites. Mawqa al Durr al Saniya. The website known as al Durr al Saniya, right? Al Durr al Saniya. Wa Islam House, hada aydan min al Mawqa al Mu'tamada. Assalamu alaikum. Likewise, Islam House. This is from the sites that are reliable. Wa hakadan al. For example, like the YouTube, we don't control it sometimes. So, um, you know, that Mushak is, is one of the great Mushaks um, on the Sunnah. Sometimes there's something Bob's on that, no. advertising with music, something like that, or maybe natural. You could ask Allah, like, but never let you tabbit the Russell Mashak Marufin and Mashuda Lahum, uh, with Thabat, uh, Ahyan and Lemanu Tabbit, the Russell YouTube, Mathalan, Yavhar, uh, Badamala, Yen Yuhmad. من البوب ابس او ما ادري كيف اقول بالعربيه بس هل من نصيحه لي التعامل مع هذه الاشياء؟ والله اذا راى الانسان ان هذا يفتنه عن دينه فيما ياتيه ويعرض له يجعله يبحث اكثر ويتابع ويفتح هذا الموقع الذي جاء ثم يدخل ويزداد دخولا في هذه المفسدات عليه ان يراجع نفسه ويبتعد عن هذا فتره <laughs> he said, with regards to this, if an individual fear, feels from himself or is fearful for himself, that he will fall into those things that pop up and he will click on those sites and go down, like we say in English, that rabbit hole, for example, and become engrossed in this, then upon him is to leave those things for a period of time and to reevaluate himself. And to reevaluate himself. Can I make sure? Istihlar and Allah as a Jerra Kibun Alek, Wamatale on Alek, when a clatter Mata Tamut, how will die him and Irbat Nafsak be had? Wahada Yajaluka La Tedhab, or a Hadi Hilfitan. He says that an individual will be mindful of the fact that Allah is aware of him and is seeing oversees him and, and, and sees that which he does keep this constantly in your mind because this will some this will be something that will stop you from falling behind these uh places that cause fitna well <laughs> يقول الساعة أحسن الله عليكم ما هي التوبة النصوحة الذي ذكره الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه التوبة بأن يندم الإنسان على المعصية التي وقعت منه The Sheikh Habib Allah Ta'ala he said uh, the question was because somebody didn't hear it what is the توبة النصوحة that Allah mentions in his book uh, the Sheikh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he went on to say that a tawbah is that an individual have nadam or that he have regret about the ma'asiyah or about the action of uh, disobedience that occurred from him. And then he have firm resolve that he won't return to it. Wa يكثر من الاستغفار والتوبة إلى الله من هذا الذنب. And he should be abundant in his asking of forgiveness and his returning back to Allah with توبة because of the sin that occurred from him. وإن كان في شيء من حقوق الآدميين فعليه أن يؤدي حقهم. And if that action had in it 
something that was taken from the rights of the humans, then it is necessary that that be returned back to them. No. No. Jazakumullah khair, ya shaykhana. Inshallah, I'll في هذه الكفاية. والله كما ترون إذا عندكم سؤال أخير ب 10 دولار مشكلة خلاص في إذا إذا تسمح لنا في سؤالان إن شاء الله الله يجزيكم خيرا طيب تفضل تفضل نبدأ به إن شاء الله تفضل أنا هو سألني من هو أحد الذكر أنا قلت له هي الباني مثلا من باب صالح الفوزة هو قال يا هذول ليش ما يعني هذول يحفظون عندي يعني هو لا يريد يعرف الحق يعني هل إذا مات مثل هذا الشخص وهو يصفح أهلاما يعني علماء وهو يصفح علماء هل إذا مات مثل هذا الشيخ اليوم يعذر بالجهل يقول يعذر بالجهل لا. طيب إن شاء الله هل هل سمعت سؤال يا شيخنا يقول السائل يعني هو ناقش مع أحد الناس في هذه الآية فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون فيعني سأله هذا المعاند مثلا من أهل الذكر فقال هم قال أخونا هم أمثال العلماء مثل الباني مثل الشيخ فوزان وأمثالهم فقال لا هؤلاء ليسوا أهل الذكر هؤلاء بس يعني يحفظون مجرد الحفظ ولا ولا يدرون ولا يدرون فهل إذا مات هذا الشخص على ما هو عليه من سب العلماء وتنقص منهم هل هذا يعذر بالجهل؟ أنا ما أدري هذا الذي جرى الحوار معه من يقصد أو من العلماء عنده من يعني so, ليس عندي مشكلة أن أن لا يعتبر ابن باز والألباني وابن عثيمين علماء ليس مشكلة كبيرة لأنه قد يكون جاهلا لا يعرفهم لكن من العلماء عنده هل عنده علماء فعلا؟ يرجعون إلى الكتاب والسنة وهو ليس عنده علم وبالتالي لا يعرف العلماء إذا كان عنده علماء معتبرين وأهل سنة وأهل توحيد وأهل عقيدة لكن لا يعرف العلماء هؤلاء فلا إشكال في ذلك يرد يجيب يقول ليس عنده علماء أصلا هو هو يقول لا لا عنده علماء وهو يسب يسب هؤلاء يعني يعرفهم ويسبهم هذا أمره إلى الله الإنسان هذا تعدي يعني حتى لو لم يعني تعرف هؤلاء بأي وجه تسب هذا ظلم وتعدي لا شك والإنسان يعذر إذا كان عنده شبهة في في مسألته أما هو ما الذي عنده The Sheikh Hafiz Allah The question was an individual who uh... It challenges this ayat that asks the people of dhikr if you don't know. And he says, who are the people of dhikr out of, uh, uh, com- in a combative way? And if he is told who the people of dhikr are from the major scholars of our time, like Sheikh Al-Bani, rahimahullah, bin Baz, rahimahullah, or Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, hafizahullah. And he says that these individuals are not the people of dhikr. These are individuals who have just simply memorized things, and they're not the ones who actually know. Uh, then is this person, if he dies in this circumstance where he is, attacking the ulama and speaking bad about them and call and speaking in the, about them in a way that is deficient is this person excused with his ignorance the sheikh Allah ta'ala he said i don't know about this um but if an in, the question i would ask is who are the ulama of this person who are the ulama that this person claims are the people of dhikr that he goes back to because if an individual doesn't know who sheikh al-albani was or doesn't know who bin baz was etc then this is not a big problem. He might not know who they are to know that they're from these people. But the issue is, who does he go back to? Does he actually have scholars that he goes back to who are upon the correct methodology, who have the correct aqidah, who call him to the book and the sunnah, etc.? So the question would be, who are the people that this individual goes back to because he doesn't know? Who does he take his knowledge from? The brother responded that this type of person doesn't have any scholars that he goes back to. And I added the statement, that instead this person, he curses the scholars even though he knows who they are and reduces from them. And the Sheikh said, then generally speaking, to speak bad about the Muslim, to curse the Muslim, then this is a transgression in any circumstance. And even more so with regards to the uh, the scholars. Uh, and inshallah, what's the question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
and later you realize that that group of people were not, uh, maybe they were not even, they were kufar or maybe they were not those of the abida. No. So what would you do with those sal- salah you no. behind them? أحسن الله عليكم يقول السائل يعني إذا صلى الشخص خلف جماعة خلف إمام في جماعة عندهم بدعة مكفرة لمدة من الزمان ثم عرف أنهم على بدعة مكفرة فماذا يعني يفعل بالنسبة للصلاة الصلوات التي صلاها معه إذا كان كذلك كما يقول وفعلا هذه بدعة مكفرة مخرجة من دين الإسلام وكان صلى معهم وما مضى على ما مضى عليه ولا شيء عليه فيما مضى ولكن يبقى النظر هل هي فعلا مكفرة أم لا لكن الجواب على مقدار السؤال إذا كان فعلا هذه مكفرة وصلى وهو لا يدري فلا يعيد الصلاة الصلوات الماضية The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he said if, uh, uh, the, the question was for those who might not have heard it if an individual prays behind an imam or a group of people who have an innovation that exits them out of Islam, and he prayed with them for a period of time, and then he realizes that they're not upon Islam, what does he do about the prayers that he prayed with them before? The Sheikh Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said that if the circumstance is the way that you said it was, and that these individuals are upon disbelief, they have an innovation that takes them out of Islam, then the past is the past. The, what you did in the past is left in the past. There's nothing upon you with regards to the salawat that you prayed previously. But there still remains consideration to be given is what you mentioned about them having an innovation that exits them out of Islam is truly something that exits them out of Islam or not. And so that needs to be considered and paid attention to, just generally speaking, is that innovation that they did one that actually takes them out of Islam. But the answer is given according to the question. And so, if the question says that they were upon disbelief, then the past is the past. No. 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 يقصد مثلا القادياني عندنا جماعة هنا قاديانية أحمدية. هؤلاء كفار بقولا واحدا الكفر هؤلاء يعني قولا واحدا كفار لا شك. No. No. So the Sheikh said, yeah, this type of group, then they're kufar, the qadiani or the Ahmadiyya, those who believe that there's a prophet after the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's a group of them here in St. Louis. I mentioned. He said that yes, these type of individual, these are kufar, a unified statement. There's only one opinion about them, and they are disbelievers without doubt. جزاكم الله خير يا شيخنا نصلى الله. لكن أقول إذا كانت الصلاة قريبة يعني التي صلاها وعرف يمكن أن يعيد الصلاة القريبة أما الصلاة الصلوات السابقات فلا هل هل نقول القريب في الوقت او يعني بعد الوقت؟ لا لا يعني مثلا انا صل... كنت اصلي معهم ما عرفت الا الان والان صليت معهم العصر نفرض وعيد العصر نعم والله اعلم احسن الله عليكم The Sheikh حفظه الله تعالى he added he said but if the salat was close if you had just recently prayed it then re pray the salat inshallah and Allah knows best as far as that which has you prayed a while ago then uh, that that's done inshallah then i asked the que- the check the question to follow up do we say that which is close is in the same time frame of the salat and the sheikh hafizullah ta'ala said for example if an individual just prayed asr with them and then he found out about them then he can repray asr inshallah and allah knows best jazakumullah khair ya sheikh nasa allah yubarak fi kum ya jamal fi mizani hasanatikum آمين يا رب لنا ولكم وجزاكم الله خير جميعا على تنظيم هذا اللقاء والشيخ أبو تيمية إجزاء الله خير على الترجمة والإخوة الحاضرين والأخوات والمستمعين والمستمعات أسأل الله عز وجل بأسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العلى أن يحفظنا وإياكم ويثبتنا وإياكم بالقول الثابت والذين قال الله عز وجل فيه يثبت الله الذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا نعم والآخرة وصلى الله عز وجل لي ولكم الثبات أمين وإياكم يا شيخنا جزاكم الله خيرا السلام أمين وإياكم يا رب وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاكم الله خير أجمعين وإلى اللقاء حفظكم الله نسأل الله يبارك فيك يا مرحبا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته